Today, it's time to sow some chaos. Today, it's time to be destructive. No, we're not gonna go graffiti tagging a bridge. We're gonna do something even more deviant. We're gonna paint PC parts. I am the Graying Tech, a gaming insider, and if you would like to learn how to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that subscribe button. 60 hours later, here I am. Here you can see this product piece right here, still working on fine tuning, had a error as I was spraying, caused a problem. So sanded it down. I'm gonna have to prime this guy again. Same general story here with the GPU block. Ran into a similar error. We'll have to sand it down a little bit more, maybe reprime, but definitely needs a bit of work. The Radeon logo bracket, painted, polished, ready to go, almost. I might do another polishing on this piece just to get rid of a little bit more of that orange texture that can occur, but this one is ready too. Now I have to tell you a secret. I hate painting. It's smelly, it's messy, it's annoying. I hate painting, but there's simply no substitute for painting when it comes to customizing your system. It just looks so nice. That's why we have to paint. So I had to do all of this work for your vanity project? Okay, well, yes, but we all know red increases your frames per second by at least 5%. That's, that's scientifically proven. Uh-huh. My future self is gonna end up kicking me. I just know it. So let's make it worth it. 60% of your time is going to be spent simply prepping the items that you want to paint. For example, disassemble the component itself into as small of a piece as possible, just the part that you want to paint if possible. So take a look here at the Lee and Lee Unifan. I disassembled part of the fan, specifically the accent pieces and the sticker in the middle. I really wanted to make sure that I had just the part that I wanted to paint so that I didn't have to tape the entire fan itself. Just be careful when you take things apart and don't drop them like I did. That's bad form. Now you can take apart fans, water blocks, pieces of your case, graphics card shrouds, parts of the motherboard, power supply units. There's kind of an unlimited number of parts that you can actually disassemble from your PC and then paint or modify as you see fit. The reason that prep is so important is you need to protect everything that you can from paint. So you're going to need to tape and tape and tape. Anything that you don't want to have paint touch you need to tape. So you're gonna need to dedicate a spot to about two to three days where you can paint. This right here is a temporary rig that I can quickly set up or quickly take down. I simply put up this PVC pipe and then I put a plastic tarp all around it to seal the paint inside. I've used this tarp a few different times. It's actually probably time to get another one, but they do the job extremely well. They trap any excess paint and they block out dirt and debris from getting to the object that you're trying to paint. Just make sure that the inside is clean as possible. You're also gonna need some kind of stand. Now I have used actual stands, I took apart the winter slide that I built for my kids. Yeah, that's right, that's what we do here when it snows. But I took that apart and in the summer, I actually used that to host a lot of the PC component parts that I used on the case build itself. I painted those, I had them hanging on pieces of wire and that allowed me to spray both sides of the part at the same time. You're gonna wanna do something like this if the part you're spraying is not flat or if it needs to be painted on multiple sides. If you are painting something flat, it's okay to use a flat surface. You can use a piece of cardboard, or if you, something needs to stick up just a little bit because you're trying to get perfect edges along the sides, use a nail board. In this particular instance, I have a Lazy Susie track with a wooden board on top of it that then I screwed a whole bunch of screws from the bottom to through the top. This allows me to put on numerous objects and paint a whole lot of stuff all at the same time. Or if I have one big object or a couple big objects, 
I can make sure that they are sitting up high enough that I can get under the edge and make sure that they are getting very good paint adhesion. The last part of prep is isopropyl alcohol. You want to make sure that all of the parts you're using are clean as possible before you put them into the paint area. Your hands have grease and dirt and debris, even if you think that they are clean, even if you just wash them. So what you want to avoid is touching the components you want to paint as much as possible. Use isopropyl alcohol to clean the surface and then use that same paper towel or a microfiber and move the part into the paint area. Don't touch it again with your hands. It will cause issues with the paint and the ability for the paint to adhere to the object that you're holding. It can also ruin a smooth finish if that's what you're going for. 5% is prepping the object itself for that first layer of paint. You wanna use a relatively high grit, sandpaper or something in the four to 600 range, because you're just trying to make score marks and to rough up the surface a little bit in order to make sure that the primer coat that you're going to put on will adhere to the surface. If you are painting metal, use self-etching primer. This primer is chemically designed to bite into the metal just a little bit to give you a good solid surface, a good bond between the metal and the paint. And then subsequent paint layers on top will stick to that primer. If you're using plastic, acrylic, PETG, those kind of materials work best with a bonding primer, specifically one designed to bond to plastic. It's almost like gluing the paint on top of the plastic piece itself. If you need paint recommendations, I have affiliate links down below to give you recommendations. 10%, yes, only 10% of the entire painting process is actually painting. Believe it or not, the majority of the time that you are going to be spending is simply waiting around for the paint itself to do something. Before you start painting, warm the paint can up above room temperature. I normally take a bucket of hot water, put my paint can down inside of it, allow that to sit for 15 ish so odd minutes. Then, Boston shaker style, shake the can for at least a minute in order to mix up all of the chemicals that are inside so that you get a very smooth, even distribution of paint. You wanna spray in extremely even coats six to 12 inches away from the object that you're trying to spray. You wanna sweep in a left to right motion the entire time. You wanna keep things even, you wanna keep moving, and you never ever wanna stop spraying when you are pointing at the object itself. You always start and stop away from the object that you're painting. Next, you're going to rotate whatever you are painting on 90 degrees and then wait one minute. The reason that you wait one minute is to allow the paint to at least somewhat adhere to the object itself. And we are putting on just fine layers of paint over and over and over. This allows the entire paint process to work and to actually do its magic. If you apply too much paint at once, you're going to get streaks, bubbles, and it's just not gonna look good. I perform this spray, 90 degree turn, wait a minute, spray, 90 degree turn, wait a minute technique over and over until I look at the object and I think I have a good coat down. At that point, it's imperative that you do nothing. 18% of the entire painting process is simply sitting there doing nothing to the object and to the paint itself. Your job during this time is simply to wait. Now, cans will say up to an hour, you can try to sand the object itself. Generally speaking, if you are happy with the coat that you have, let it be and let it set for 12 to 24 hours and then proceed to the next layer. If you're not happy with that coat, you can at that point apply another coat to it and then start that 24 hour clock all over again. 5% of the process is wet sanding the object itself and making sure that you are properly sanding to give you a smooth, almost mirror-like finish for the final product. You wanna do that before you put another coat on top. So you soak the piece of sand paper for about 15 minutes. You wanna get the object itself a little bit wet with that same water and then lightly, lightly sand. You don't want to put a lot of pressure. You want the sandpaper itself to just simply work across the object 
and work its magic that way. You're taking off very fine layers as you're working down through. If you take off too much paint or burn through the corners, for example, you might have to start over again. 1% of the painting process is the order itself. And then you are finally done. You are finally ready. Your patience, as my favorite food personality from TV has said, your patience will be well rewarded and you will end up with a result that you will be very happy with and PC parts that match your personality and your type better than any RGB would be capable of doing. Now that we are finally done with all of the prep work for Project Red Star, it is time to finally put everything into the case and start assembling but I still don't have my GPU. Instead, we're gonna test an age-old PC gamer wisdom, and that is to install your games on a separate hard drive from the OS. Is that still valid advice, or are the drives now so fast that it doesn't really matter? You can check that video out when it publishes 